This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Throughout the First Indochina War, 1946-54, the United States provided arms, equipment, and economic aid to aid the French, first in their effort to maintain their Southeast Asian colony, and then to stem the perceived spread of communism south from the New People's Republic of China, PRC. The French were ultimately stymied in their effort by the highly aggressive, determined, and popular Viet Minh. After the debacle at Dien Bien Phu, wearied by their exertions and facing political chaos at home, France granted independence to the kingdoms of Laos and Cambodia. Ho Chi Minh had already proclaimed the independence of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, North Vietnam while the fate of the southern half of the former colony was to be determined by international arbitration at Geneva, Switzerland. As the United States began to replace France as the dominant Western power in Southeast Asia, the deliberations of the Geneva Conference were looked upon with dismay by the American government. The United States viewed any concession to the northern communists as a blow to both democracy in Asia and to American prestige, especially in the wake of the disastrous fall of China to Mao Zedong's People's Liberation Army in 1949. The provisions of any agreement that would settle the fate of Vietnam were, therefore, caught in the tangled web of post-war tensions between the United States, the Soviet Union, and the PRC. The Cold War was at its height and Vietnam was becoming one of the key storm centers of the new global rivalry. The United States was determined to prevent the fall of the new South Vietnamese government to the communists, and the center of the American effort in the mid-1950s was the Saigon Military Mission, SMM, headed by Colonel Edward M. Lansdale. Lansdale a U.S. Air Force officer on loan to the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, was well known in anti-communist circles as the man who had assisted Defense Minister Ramon Magsaysay in saving the government of the Philippines during the communist Hukbalahap uprising and in getting Magsaysay elected president. He became America's man on the scene in Asia, and was dispatched to Vietnam to see what could be done to reverse what seemed to be a disaster in the making. A small outfit, the SMM was limited to a very specific mission, prevent the fall of South Vietnam, and prepare stay-behind teams who would continue to harass the North. Arriving in Vietnam on the 1st of June 1954, one month before the signing of the Geneva Accords that were to temporarily divide the country, the SMM worked under severe manpower restrictions imposed by the agreement. The team began an extensive program of clandestine political and psychological warfare in southern Vietnam and psychological and paramilitary sabotage efforts in the north. The SMM utilized every means at its disposal to subvert the communists and upset their plans for a future reunification of Vietnam.